Hi, uh, okay, so this is the key, key area number eight. So this is the final key area of unit one, um, and it's called energy systems in muscles and cells. So this is part one, and it's all about lactate metabolism. Now that word lactate should seem familiar to you from National 5. Uh, so let's have a look at what you should know from that topic. So when we talked about lactate metabolism in National 5, we referred to it as fermentation, okay? Um, and the idea is when cells don't have enough oxygen, they'll continue to produce just two ATP via the fermentation pathway. So two ATP, not a lot of ATP. In the animal and bacterial cells, glucose is broken down to pyruvate and then it'll be converted to lactate during this. And when cells are producing lactate, they're in oxygen debt. And the idea is extra oxy oxygen can convert the lactate back into pyruvate so that the aerobic respiration can continue if the oxygen is back and in plentiful supply. So this is what we covered about fermentation that's relevant to higher human. And we're going to be building on this a little bit uh, when we're looking at lactate metabolism at higher. OK, so this should not be a new idea. Cells need energy. OK, so they need energy in order to do stuff like active transport or muscle cell contraction. Um, so during vigorous or strenuous exercise, your body might not be able to supply enough oxygen to your cells. OK, so we're talking really intense exercise there. What this means is the electron transport chain will not be able to occur. The whole of aerobic respiration, that entire mitochondrial stage that we were looking at in the last video, will not be able to occur. As a result, only only two ATP will still be produced. If a cell runs out of ATP, it will die and it will die pretty quickly. So a different metabolic pathway called fermentation can be used to make a small amount of ATP and keep the cell alive. And that's called lactate metabolism. OK, so lactate metabolism aims to provide energy through the first stage of, of respiration only, and that is glycolysis. OK, so lactate metabolism is mainly glycolysis and then a little stage at the end of it. And this results in the overall production of two ATP per molecule of glucose. Now, the lactate pathway cannot provide enough energy for long term muscle contractions. So it's only a short term solution because it's a short amount of energy. Long muscle contractions require loads of ATP and we don't have loads of ATP being produced. Now, this is what the lactate pathway looks like. OK, now it should seem pretty familiar. Basically, we have the first stage. The whole of glycolysis still happens. We still got our energy investment phase, the energy payoff stage. So we're investing two ATP for phosphorylation of glucose and intermediates. And then we're returning four ATP in response. Now, normally during the aerobic pathway is pyruvate would continue to the mitochondria to be broken down into carbon dioxide and water. And we'd end up with a, a large amount of ATP produced. But without the oxygen, this alternative pathway happens where pyruvate is converted to lactate. Now, we only skirt, not even skirted over, we, we covered NAD uh, very briefly when we looked at glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. But the idea is NAD is, is an important molecule because during the energy payoff stage, we're getting dehydrogenase enzymes, removing hydrogen ions and their electrons and passing them to NAD to create NADH. Now, we can keep doing glycolysis over and over and over again if we have enough NAD. But the issue is you might run out of NAD eventually. If you keep doing this, you'll run low on NAD. What the pyruvate to lactate reaction allows is for that NAD uh, to be converted back to NAD. No, sorry, the, the NADH to be converted back to NAD and freeing up the NAD for more reactions in glycolysis. So essentially, those hydrogen ions and electrons are given to pyruvate, which converts it to lactate, freeing up the NAD so that the NAD can continue to drive glycolysis. OK, so we're not massively building on stuff here. The new knowledge compared to glycolysis is that pyruvate with the addition of hydrogen ions and electrons can be converted to lactate and that will free up the NAD so it can continue to be a part of glycolysis and continue to drive that production of the net gain of 2 ATP. OK, this is that in words. OK, so if you ever get an exam question that's asking you about describe lactate metabolism, this is the kind of thing that you'd be expected to say. So in lactate metabolism, glucose is still converted to pyruvate. Two ATP are produced and dehydrogenase enzymes pass hydrogen ions and electrons to NAD to form NADH. More NAD is needed to keep driving glycolysis. So pyruvate is converted to lactate using the hydrogen ions 
and the electrons from NADH. This frees up the NAD so it can continue glycolysis. The lactate can be removed by providing oxygen to the lactate, will convert it back to pyruvate, and the rest of aerobic respiration can continue. Now, a buildup of lactate is bad. Why don't we just keep doing lactate metabolism over and over again? Is that lactate can be fatal to muscle cells. And it also can cause muscle fatigue due to the damage that it causes cells and the lack of ATP causes fatigue. The buildup of lactate occurs at different speeds depending on the type of activity and the type of muscle involved. So, for example, you could be running a short distance, you find that your fatigue builds up pretty quickly. Lifting weights even faster, you maybe only got a few seconds of very intense muscle contraction before you run out of enough ATP. Or it could be you're a marathon runner and maybe it's 21 miles in before your muscles actually start to get properly fatigued and refuse to contract anymore. So to summarize, the role of glucose in lacto lactate metabolism is it's broken down to pyruvate during glycolysis in the cytoplasm. So it's exactly the same as glycolysis. Pyruvate is converted to lactate in the absence of oxygen. NAD collects the hydrogen ions and electrons to form NADH. NADH gives hydrogen ions and electrons to pyruvate to form the lactate. The lactate builds up until oxygen debt is repaid. And then ATP, two of these are produced during glycolysis. OK, so that's it in terms of actual lactate metabolism. Nice, easy area. I kind of hope that you'd get sent sentence answer questions on it. It tends to be multiple choice because it is quite a basic area. Most common exam question is the why is pyruvate converted to lactate? And the reasoning behind that is about so that NAD can be freed up to continue to drive glycolysis. The next video is about different muscle types.